Welcome back to Logic 101. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on denying the antecedent. Last time, we looked at the logical fallacy known as affirming the consequent, which was essentially modus ponens gone wrong. Here, we're looking at modus tollens gone wrong. Remember back to modus tollens? For that, we had two premises, P implies Q and not Q, and we used that information to conclude not P. That's fine. This is a valid argument. You can use this all day, every day, and no one will complain. What you can't do is make the following minor modification. Rather than have your second premise be not Q, you make it not P, and you use that information to conclude not Q. We call this denying the antecedent because we have the negation, the denial, of the antecedent in line 1. Line 2 is the denial of P, and P is the antecedent of the implication in line 1. If you try pulling this, it doesn't work. This is a logic fail. This is a formal fallacy. If we have those two pieces of information, P implies Q and not P, Q may or may not be true. We simply can't conclude anything about Q based on that information. This is fairly easy to see if you go back to the visual representation that we had last time. Remember that this is P implies Q. We have that white circle P entirely housed inside of the red circle Q, so if you're inside of P, you're inside of Q. Denying the antecedent says that we know that we're not in P. Denying the antecedent. We're not in P. What does that tell us about Q? Not much. We could be inside of Q, or we could be outside of Q. Just because we're not in P doesn't mean we're not in Q. We could still be in there, but we could also not be in there. This is why we can't conclude anything based off of us knowing that we're not in P. Let's wrap things up here with a verbal version of this argument. Take this. If you have seen The Force Awakens, you know that <clears throat> you have not seen The Force Awakens. Therefore, you don't know that <clears throat> Notice that this fits the version of denying the antecedent that we saw earlier. We have the first premise as an implication. We have as the second premise the negation of the antecedent of that implication in that first line. And then we have the conclusion, the negation of the consequent of the implication. This follows the exact same form that we've seen all along. But this is nonsense. It's true that if you've seen The Force Awakens, you know, <clears throat> right? Because you've seen the film, you know what happens in the film. But if you haven't seen the film, you could still know what goes on, right? I'm sure you have a jerk friend on Facebook. You know the guy I'm talking about. You know him well. You don't like him very much. He probably went to see the Star Wars Force Awakens opening at midnight. And even while the credits were rolling, before he even got out of the theater, he got out his phone, he got on Facebook, and he started saying, Oh my goodness, I just saw Star Wars The Force Awakens, and I can't believe that <coughs> happened. I'm so shocked. OMG, LOL. You know that guy? Yeah. Well, you know, you were on Facebook, and guess what? You saw at the top of your newsfeed this guy's status, and the fact that <coughs> happens in the film was ruined for you. So just because you haven't seen the film doesn't mean you don't know the spoilers that happen in the film. And that's why you can't deny the antecedent. That also wraps up this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.